Hello and welcome to the Comics and More podcast. I'm Patrick Markfort. And I'm Dave Ferrara from Comics and More. And this week we are going to take a look at Walt Kelly's Pogo, the first volume of which, uh, Through the Wild Blue y- uh, Wonder, just came out from uh, Fantagraphics Books. And this is the cover. It's a nice thick book. Um, this covers the material from 1949 to 1950. And um, this comic strip uh, follows a group of um, animals in a forest, swampish type area in the south. Do you know where it is exactly? I don't think they ever really say. Right. Um, but there's like an alligator in it, so you gotta assume it's like Mississippi, Louisiana, somewhere like that, especially with the accents that the characters have. Um, the main character is Pogo the Possum, which is the little guy on the end here. Um, and he has a group of kind of funny animals that he um, kind of has in his life. Um, I don't know. At first, I was kind of like, um, I was kind of annoyed by the accents that the ki- that the characters had in it. Um, they talk in this like really deep southern accent, and you know you have to kind of like work your work your way through the language a little bit at first. But it, after you kind of get used to it, it kind of flows a bit better. And I feel like if it didn't have that kind of like characteristic to it, it wouldn't be as interesting, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. It kind of grew on me. But it takes, a, it takes a little bit for you to get used to it, I guess. But at first I was kind of annoyed, but I liked it at the end. <laughs> um, I don't know, these characters go on lots of like little adventures. Like the alligator character will like swallow a friend of theirs, which happens several times. And they have to get him like out of his stomach. Um, it doesn't really adhere to like, you know, like um, real life situation very much because there's kind of like, like things don't really make sense necessarily, but it's all for you know the comedic value of of the actual adventure that's taking place. Um, and there's like a cute little puppy who comes up, they kind of raise a little bit, who disappears, and people are blaming the alligator for eating him. And I don't know, there's all kinds of fun things like that in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and Walt Kelly's art is really nice on these pages. Um, but this collects all the dailies um, at the beginning of the book, and then it gets into the Sundays at the end, um, <clears throat> which are in full color and look really nice in the full color. Yeah, I really like that, you know, cartoony look of the characters. Um, I like the kind of, like, especially in the Sundays, the colors and the lush backgrounds and um like the sunsets and stuff are really like beautiful Mm -hmm. in that that he kind of like incorporates um and yeah there's just a lot of like fun characters lots of like little personalities that kind of clash and i don't know it's a nice it's a nice fun book i feel like it's one of the um comic strips that i think i've enjoyed the most that i've read over the last couple years yeah um then yeah i kind of i i just like the idea of like a bunch of like force animals kind of like in a comic strip together Mm -hmm. i don't know it just works for me yeah, well, it's a great strip, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, um, you know, Pogo was kind of a missing piece in this golden age of comic strip reprints that we've, you know, looked at before in the show. I think a lot of people have wanted and expected a complete reprinting of Pogo uh, for quite a few years. And it's taken a while for this one to come out. They solicited yep. it, like, years ago. Yeah, it was originally announced by Fantagraphics a f- at least a few years ago that they would be doing the complete Pogo. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there were a series of delays on the book, and it, it took a while for them to get it out, mostly because it was just really hard for them to get their hands on um, good source material from which to reprint the strip. Mm-hmm. Um, and they wanted to do it right, they wanted it to look good, um, you know, so the question becomes, was it worth the wait, this year's long wait? And mm-hmm. I think the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. I think Fantagraphics has done a phenomenal job with this volume of Pogo. Um, I'm sure they will do as phenomenal of a job with subsequent books collecting Pogo, which should be about a dozen books uh, when all is said and done. And, you know, by that time, nobody will have remembered that it took them so long to get the first one out. They'll just be happy that someone has um, given such a great archival presentation to this material. Mm-hmm. So I um, I think it was definitely worth the wait. It's, it's The volume is lovingly edited by Kim Thompson and Carolyn Kelly. That is Walt Kelly's daughter, <laughs> who also did the painted cover 
a lot of the design work on this volume was done by her as well. So for a lot of reasons, this was clearly a labor of love. Mm -hmm. Pogo is many people's number one comic strip. It's a lot of people's favorites. Um, you know, some people consider it the greatest strip of all time. And uh, you can see that here. Um, right out of the gate with the earliest strips, the drawing is phenomenal. It's a lush, cartoony uh, drawing style. Um, very detailed, but not overburdened with detail. Walt Kelly worked for Disney before he did this strip, and the influence of that style of cartooning and animation really shows mm -hmm. here. I mean, this looks like it could be um, a Disney product and a very well, well executed one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I love that uh, his panels are really densely packed. Um, a lot of times there'll be the, the primary story going on in the foreground or that day's gig going on in the foreground. And then in the background, there'll be another little kind of side element as well with other little characters fishing or something like that. Um, so it's a really fully rendered world. Also packed with a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. um, Pogo, um, who is sort of an, a kind of sort of passive everyman character uh, is, is, you know, he's the title character, but he's really only one of an ensemble of characters. Um, you know, they have Howlin' Owl and Churchy La Femme the Turtle and Albert the Alligator, of course, are all prominently featured, but there are many, 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 many side characters. Um, so it's a really packed, full world that Kelly is is bringing to light here. What are some of your favorite characters in this one? Um, well, I do like Albert, yeah. um, <laughs> the alligator, who is probably, you know, could be considered the co-star yeah. along with Pogo. He's kind of, um, I suppose if, if you had to, um, you know, come up with some analogs, you know, Pogo may be more of the Mickey Mouse and Albert would be a bit more like Goofy. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's always, you know, he's the one who's more going to go out and get into some kind of a harebrained scheme and Pogo may or may not come along with him. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I liked him a lot. Oh, and uh, the Porcupine character, Porcupine, Porcupine yep. <laughs> who is just a grump, kind of like Eeyore, I guess, from Winnie the Pooh. He's just... But he has a soft side, especially when it comes yes! to Pogo. <laughs> yep, he has, you know, P Porcupine is just this scowly, like, little porcupine character is just never happy and always grumpy but Walt Kelly knows and the readers know that deep deep down under all underneath all the prickles porcupine <laughs> does have a heart of gold and there's a few instances where that comes out um there's famously is it I don't know it's a new year's trip or, or Christmas I think it's Christmas or, or something like that the uh porcupine is gonna like smile because he never smiles but then the lights go out so he smiles but we don't get to see him smile it's kind of a taboo in the strip that you can never see porcupine smile mm -hmm. smiling so anyway obviously there's a lot of great wonderful characters in this strip that i really um enjoyed mm -hmm. um so yep so we've got the dailies and the sundays and the sundays are in color as you mm -hmm. mentioned which uh is great uh, i really like that um and should we talk a little bit about coloring. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I spend too much time talking about this kind of thing. Um, so Walt Kelly uh, would be, he was involved in the in the coloring of his strip, uh, which some strip cartoonists were and some were not. Uh, he would provide his own color guides to the colorist who would then do the actual color that would appear in the newspapers. So an ideal reprinting uh, project probably I would think would have used those guides and um, had them recolored so that it would be kind of a cleaner look in the way that they did with the Carl Burks books. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately a lot of those guides I don't think still survive and um, as much of the original artwork for the strip does not survive. So as I believe they did with the dailies uh, they did with the color and they just took um, the actual printed strips and use those for the basis of what we see reprinted here. So the the way that the Sunday strips appear here are is very close to how they appeared to readers of the original newspapers in which they appeared. 
Um, and I like, I really like how the coloring looks. It is, you know, it's, it sometimes can be a little bit muddy and maybe not quite as clean and sharp as we've seen in some other reprint projects. But again, it's kind of okay because you know this is how these strips were appearing. Walt Kelly, I think, composed these strips being very aware of, you know, reprinting and coloring processes in the newspapers. Um, so it, it just, it has a very nice vintage look to it. And of course they have been cleaned up a little, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do like the approach that they took with the coloring here. I thought it was very good. Uh, and my favorite strip appears, or my favorite sequence appears in the um, Sunday pages, which is a long sequence where they are uh, after the Fountain of Youth. Okay. They go on a quest for the Fountain of Youth, and then there's all these twists and turns and mistaken identities, and it's really a funny, fun strip. Yeah, I like that one too. I also like the one in the Sundays where they, um, where they encountered the fountains. And oh, the yeah. alligator um, kind of pretended to be this like wood nymph or whatever for them. Mm -hmm. That was a cute one too. I like that one. Yep. Yeah. So it's great. And I agree with you too. The language at first could be something of a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, but if you read enough of them in a row, like mm -hmm. for me, when this really came together is when we were coming up on the deadline for the podcast and I was really having to read a lot of them in big chunks to get through it. Uh, but that's actually when it really started to click for me, the rhythm of the language, mm -hmm. the rhythm of the gags, and I was just able to sink into it. And uh, it was just wonderful. What a mm -hmm. wonderfully uh, rendered cartoon world. I like it to kind of like my experience reading, reading Crazy Cat. Um, you know, the dialogue is not as stylized as you see there. Yeah. But uh, that one, too... Um, initially, it can seem a little bit off-putting, mm -hmm. uh, but you get to that point area where you kind of can crack the code of the language, yeah. and the characters' voices start clicking in your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, I just absolutely loved this volume. I think it, it stands out even amongst all the wonderful reprints um, that we're seeing of great comic strips. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, like the first, I don't know, like... 10, 15 pages, like, I was definitely struggling with the language, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to like this at all. But yeah, it definitely just kind of comes. And it's and not only do you, like, are you able to accept the language, but it becomes probably one of the things you really enjoy about this strip. It mm -hmm. certainly did for me. I mean, I love the characters' voices and this kind of southern, like, pigeon, yeah. like, like Cajun, uh, you know, vernacular that they have. It's just a blast yeah. to read. Yeah, it is a lot of fun.